Okay, so I'm going to talk about a few different mediators of inflammation, some different molecules and chemicals that are involved in mediating inflammation by recruiting either pro-inflammatory cells or cytokines to a site of inflammation. So first, we're going to talk about the lipid mediators. Number one, thromboxane. Oops. Um, thromboxane. So what thromboxane causes is vasoconstriction If you don't know what vasoconstriction is, it's just constricting of your blood vessels It also causes platelet aggregation and a few other effects. Next are the prostaglandins. What they cause are vascular permeability, so more um, the ability for cells, uh, like the leukocytes, to exit the blood vessels and migrate into the tissue. Vascular permeability. They also cause vascular dilation, so vessels getting bigger. And neutrophil chemotaxis. Next, we have our leukotrienes. Do this in a different color. Leukotrienes. Leukotrienes. Now, what they do is they, um, well, they have C4, D4, and E4, and they me mediate lung inflammation. So C4, D4, E4 mediate lung inflammation. Um, and B4 actually causes neutrophil chemotaxis. Platelet activating factor causes um, platelet aggregation and neutrophil activation and eosinophil chemotaxis as well. So some more different mediators of inflammation, which I'll talk about now, which are not lipids. So maybe I'll put a little line here. These are the lipid mediators. Anything else that I talk about right now is not lipid mediated. Um, so chemokines. Chemokines attract leukocyte subsets to sites of inflammation, and they also regulate the expression and conformation of cell adhesion molecules. And then you have the anaphylatoxins, which I talked about in a previous video, but I didn't go into too much detail about them. What they are, are C3, so remember in the complement pathways, so hold on, let me just try and spell this, anaphylatoxins, so C3A and C5A, so remember in the complement pathways, whenever a C3 gets cleaved, and we are, we're always using the C3B, and a C5, we're always using the C5B, but we never really use a C3A. Well, that, what, what they are is anaphylatoxins. Now, what they do is they trigger mast cell release of histamine. Which leads to smooth muscle contraction.
and vascular permeability. And you also have pro-inflammatory cytokines like um, tumor necrosis factor. So I'll write pro inflam cytokines. So tumor necrosis factor alpha, um, interleukin 1, interleukin 6. And these ones are actually interesting because they mediate and they have lots of redundancy among the three of them. So they induce fevers. Um, there's a few things to do. So all three of them are what do we call pyrogenic. So all three would be pyrogenic, meaning they induce fever. So this is part of, for any fellow neuroscientists out there, um, this is a form of neuroimmunomodulation. Immun so when you get sick, it's not actually the sickness that's making you have a fever and throw up. It's actually your your brain. So there's a thing called the vagus nerve, which sends out all these signals to tell you to throw up and tell you to feel tired and tell you to have a fever because during a fever response, the bacteria or virus won't, won't act um, to their full potential, but your immune system can still act at its full potential. So it gives them an advantage over the invading pathogen. So that's part of this, part of this inflammatory response. All three of them also synthesize acute phase proteins in the liver. All three of them increase vascular permeability. Interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor increase adhesion molecules on the vascular endothelium. Um, and then once again, interleukin-1 and tumor necrosis factor increase fibroblast proliferation. Interleukin-1 only will increase platelet production. And then these two, once again, will uh, induce chemokines and then induction of interleukin-6. All three of them will activate T cells and B cells, and then interleukin-6 will increase Ig synthesis. So they are pretty interesting, all of these different inflammatory mediators. So I just wanted to give a little bit of context here as well. So when I talk about a smooth muscle, so here is a skeletal muscle. So here's my terrible bone, and then you have this muscle. This bigger this muscle here on this bone. So you often see it drawn like that. So skeletal muscle is under our voluntary control. Then you also have what's called smooth muscle. So usually it's drawn like this color, kind of the color of like an organ or something. So this is your smooth muscle. So something like your, your heart or kidneys or lungs. Lungs is a really good example. So what smooth muscle has is histamine receptors. H1. And what histamine will do is it'll bind to H1, which causes smooth muscle contraction. So this will contract and gets much smaller. So it'll decrease in size into this little bubble right here. And then it also has increased vascular permeability. So all of these inflammatory cytokines can come in and act on this and inflame it. So if you have like your, your lungs here, if you're an as, if you're an asthmatic, people will often take, um, maybe not antihistamines, but maybe for allergies, an antihistamine like Benadryl, you might take that, or an anti-leukotriene like um, monoleucast or Zilutin, you might take one of those, which Zilutin inhibits 5-lipooxygenase uh, binding, and then I believe monocast, monoleucast inhibits CIST-T1 binding. You don't quote me on that once again, but just to give you an idea of what this all does. So like vascular permeability would be an increase in, this is a little vein here, and this is a cell traveling through the vein like this. It's gonna be able to leak out. they are really big cells, but you can get the point here. They're gonna leak out and they're gonna act on whatever site of inflammation you have going on here. And then also permeab or the vascular dilation. So if this is your normal, um, vein size or, or diameter, it'll increase like this. So you have a ton more blood flow coming through. So the different vascular permeability versus um, vascular uh, dilation will cause different things like swelling or redness or pain or heat to the uh, tissue that's inflamed. 
Um, but yeah, so that's a little introduction to the mediators of inflammation.